Hi everyone. Today I, I want to share a sort of a little known feature in, in GHC about um, what are called boot files. Um, so you need these boot files uh, anytime you want to have two mutually recursive modules. So when you want to define, uh, you want to have two different files that both sort of import each other. If you do it naively, it just doesn't work. Um, and so I'll show you how GHC handles that and, and sort of how to set it up starting from scratch and, and building up a little cabal file so that we can see the, the, the whole process and how it all fits together. Uh, so let's get let's get started. So here I am in my directory. There's nothing in here. We're starting we're starting very fresh. So I like to do start with cabal init dash i for interactive so that it can tell me the different steps I'm going to need to take. Should I generate a simple project? Well, if I say yes, then that's not interactive. So I, I do want to do interactive. Um, I'm going to be making a library here. Um, oh, that looks fine. Oh, that's a terrible name. Let's just call it boot. Um, sure. Uh, that's a good package version. I'm sure whatever the default here is is fine. No, none. Um, I don't know. I can never choose this. I, I, some, I think I arbitrarily choose MIT. Um, yes, I am Richard Eisenberg. Yes, that's a great email address for me. We'll come back to that later. We'll come back to that later. Um, yeah, no category. I don't need a category. Um, sure, you can make a source directory. Should I generate a test suite? Uh, no, not today. Let's not get involved with that. Sure, Haskell 2010. Um, uh, no, let's not have a, a glorious cabal file. So that's already going to create for me um, my change log and my license and this boot.cabal here where boot is the name of the uh, library that I've chosen. And then a source directory where I can have my, my sources. So right now there's already mylib.hs. So right, right now let's call up cabal, this boot.cabal file. And it already is sort of ready to go mostly. Um, here, exposed modules, these are the modules that users of my library will be able to import. Um, so I'm going to be very creative, and I'm going to have a module A and a module B, which we'll, we'll write both of those very shortly. Um, in fact, let's just go right in right now. So we have module A where, um, and let's see, this is the right thing. I need to put this in the source directory, and we're going to call this, not module A where, but this is a.hs. And, oh, I guess if we go into source, there's this mylib. Let's just kill that off. We don't, we don't want that. Great. Um, okay, so we have module A where. There's already an error. I don't want an error yet. Failed. Oh, blarg. Um, that might just be I need to restart the LSP server. It was working quite fine earlier. Um, okay, so hopefully this is, oh, no. Uh, oh, we're getting blarg again. Oh, it can't, aha, so if we go down here, we actually get something useful. Can't find source for B. Well, no, we haven't made it yet, of course. Uh, so this is gonna be module B where, uh, B.hs. Okay, now, aha, now everything is a little bit happier. But what I wanna do in module A is let's, um, let's export a data type A um, from module A. And here we're gonna have data A equals muck A int. Uh, this is constructor one, and then mook a two, and here I'm going to store a data B. You know what, though? This is confusing. I don't want to name this A and B, because then I have two different things named A and B. Let's call this X. Um, and here it's going to, to have a Y. And then over here, this is going to export Y with its constructors. And you can see where this is going. So we have y and then make y1. Let's say that takes a bool. And then we're going to have make y2, which is supposed to store an x. So we can build these structures, right? We can sort of alternate x and y, x and y, and then eventually we'll end with either int or a bool, uh, uh, depending on, on sort of where we, which data type we end with. So these are, this is an inhabited data type. Um, but of course, it says, I don't know what y is. Um, and on the other ones, because I don't know what x is. So this is easy to solve. Let's just import b. And then A here is quite happy. I've imported B, and it know, and B exports Y, so that's all good. So over here, let's just import A. Ah, now not so happy. Cyclic module dependency between A, B. So normally at this point, the best thing to do in truth is just to combine X and Y in the same module. When you have these mutually recursive data types like this, just about any function that operates over one is gonna have to also operate over the other. You're gonna have two functions that are mutually recursive. It's gonna be very hard to do much with this, these data types in separate files. 
But I hope we can all imagine that in larger projects, it can sometimes be hard to combine. Maybe there's 2,000 lines of stuff involving X and another 2,000 lines of stuff involving Y. Do we really want that in some super file? Probably not. Maybe there's some weird template Haskell reason that we need to split this up into files. Um, or, or maybe it's just so massive that we have so many different modules involved and we only have one little sort of um, uh, uh, back backlink in our in our uh, dependency tree that we what we just want to sort of snip. So I'm going to show you a solution without doing without sort of fixing this the, the right way, which is putting everything in one file, um, because HS boot files are really quite annoying, although they do work. Okay, so the, the key idea here is that I can't just have one module, I can't have this cyclic module dependency. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. And this is also going to start module a where but instead of naming it a.hs, I'm going to call this a.hs boot. Uh, and sort in the same directory as a. And what a.hs boot does is it declares, um, uh, it, it includes sort of the, uh, uh, the interface parts of any definitions in a that I want accessible from b. So here, the only thing that I really need is the fact that x exists. Right now in B, I don't reference any of X's constructors. I just reference the fact that X exists. So my A.HS boot, all I have to write is data X. And that says that A, I'm not going to say what X is, but A, the, the module A, is going to export X. So we can put that up here as well. Um, and then now in B, instead of saying import A, that still gets me my cyclic module dependency that I don't want, I would use this funny paradigma uh, called source. And what source says is, I want to import from the HS boot file, please. Um, and so that looks in this file, it sees X, so now it knows what X is. And then here in module A, I can import B. And actually, there's a consistency check that goes on here, because I want to make sure that, that A.HS boot doesn't have anything that, that A doesn't. So maybe I also export sneaky here and sneaky is maybe some function on x's. And so this module looks okay by itself, but now uh, when I look at module A, I don't know why the error is here, but a.sneaky is exported by the HS boot file, but not exported by the module. And, and that makes sense, right? Because the HS boot file is meant to be the interface for A. I can't sort of declare that there's this sneaky, and maybe some function in here uses sneaky. Maybe I have f, that works on y's and maybe f of mcy1 true, that, that could be mcy1 of false. And then if it's mcy2 of x, maybe I want to call mcy2 sneaky of x. And this is all good because a.hs boot exported sneaky. So it better be that when I finally compile my, um, my library that there is in fact a sneaky. Otherwise, I, I sort of have a, I'll, I'll have a link error essentially, but, but GHC catches that as a, as, a, as a better error here, that it's not exported by this module. So I need to really do sneaky, and then I'll just use id for, to define sneaky here. And now if I save, oh, it's still not exported. Um, I can do that. Uh, and now oh, we're going to get another interesting error here. I'm not quite sure why we're getting errors on this line, but there you go. Um, identifier sneaky has conflicting definitions in the module and its HS boot file. And that's because when we're type checking the module itself, we don't really sort of get information from the HS boot file. It's not quite how it works. Um, and so instead we look at this and we infer this nice general type for sneaky because it just works over anything, it's id. Um, but in fact, the boot file uh, exports a different type. So this is no good. Um, so now I have to give a type signature here. And I think that should work. And just to show you that it really does work, if I go here and I say cabal build, um, I think it will just sort of do its thing and everything builds just fine. Uh, so, um, so, we, so it does do this check, uh, this, this consistency check, as we've seen. I, I said earlier that this isn't really the best solution to this problem, and that's because we have to be very careful to keep the .hs boot file uh, in sync with the, the main file. So if, let's say, I change sneaky here to take, I don't know, an int parameter that it ignores. Well, now we're going to get this inconsistency problem, uh, and now I have to tiresomely go to the HS boot file and change the HS boot file to also have an int there, and then now this gets invalidated, as well it should, because this needs to pass an int. 
Um, but it is kind of annoying to keep these HS boot files up to date. And so often a better design is, is, is preferable, but sometimes there's just really no choice. And so, so here's an option for you. Anyway, I hope this has been educational for you. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.